All right, guys, today we're going to talk about Africa's history. You have five essential questions that we went over. Question one, talk about the European partitioning or the dividing up of Africa. How did it contribute to conflict, civil war, and to artificial political boundaries? So it said the Europeans had no respect and did not think the religious groups or ethnic groups in Africa. So many got clumped together in one country, which created artificial borders. This is because each group wanted their way to be how things were done. So every country was trying to implement their own assimilation, we talked about that, among their people. Conflict grew as they could not come to terms or understandings on how things should be run, and soon countries started fighting in civil wars that still continue today. All right? So these artificial political <coughs> boundaries and borders were drawn by the Europeans. If you look at a map of Africa, so much is drawn up that was created by the Europeans, okay, and not by the Africans. All right, number two. Number two talks about how independence led, how nationalism led to independence in three countries, specifically that we've talked about, South Africa, Kenya, and Nigeria. So many people had a strong desire for independence from foreign rule in their country. They had pride in their country. They wanted to have their own say in their country. In South Africa, Nelson Mandela fought for his freedom and was thrown into jail. About 27 years later, um, he was released from prison, and then he became the first black president of South Africa. Kenya and Nigeria all had people in them who wanted freedom too. Kenya was colonized by Great Britain and gained independence in 1964. Kenya was led by a man named Kenyatta, but he did not give them the freedom that they felt they deserved. So it's always, you know, sometimes things are better the way they, they were in some instances uh, because dictators would come in and take over. Nigeria gained independence from Great Britain in 1960. Most would think that things would be peaceful in Nigeria, but there is a war that still continues between the Christians in the south and Muslims over in the north, and all of that is over oil. All right? So question three talks about apartheid. So what was apartheid? How was it created? And then how was it dissolved? How did it end? So apartheid started in 1948 when the South African white population, which was of British and Dutch descent, wanted to have legal segregation. This is what apartheid was, was the legal segregation or separation of races. Okay? In the end, it took Nelson Mandela working with F.W. de Klerk to change apartheid, okay, to end apartheid. When Mandela got out of prison, he became the first black president of South Africa. Apartheid ended in South Africa in 1994. There were a lot of economic sanctions put on South Africa from other countries around the world. All right, number four, talks a little bit more about apartheid. What role did Mandela and de Klerk play? And so I'll just go over most of the stuff that I just did. Mandela was in prison for 27 years. De Klerk helped Mandela out of jail and helped end apartheid. So F.W. De Klerk is going to be the last white president of South Africa. Mandela is the first native black president of South Africa. Um, Mandela started as an activist. Okay, So apartheid ended in 1994. All right, And the last thing, number five, talks about the Pan-African Movement. What was the impact on the Pan-African Movement on the continent of Africa? It united Africans against slavery and people with an African descent. That They realized that they shared a common heritage and they, they needed to work together. They worked for freedom. This sparked independence movements and that was the biggest thing, the biggest outcome of the Pan-African Movement is that it sparked independence movements around the continent. It also helped improve the economy. All right, so these are five essential questions that you need to know for your test.